Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Be My Voice, playing as part of the 12th European Union Human Rights Film Base. I'm really excited to be joined by the director of the film, Nahid Parson. Hi, Nahid. How are you? Hi. Thank you. I'm okay. I'm okay. We're really glad that you're here with us today. And uh, your film is one of the most important films of uh, uh, for in the selection especially nowadays uh, it is it is a really really important documentary but before we started to talk about i just want to give a little information about you and later on we can just start uh she she was born in shiraz iran and she took pol political asylum in sweden as a result of her political activism during and after 1979 revolution in iran since 2000 nahin had pursued a successful career as a documentary filmmaker in sweden Nahid's social political films have been harshly critical of the position of women under islamic republic regime on a trip to iran after she released of her award-winning documentary, Prostitution Behind the Whale, Nahid was arrested and integrated, interrogated by the secret, secret police. Nahid is the recipient of numerous awards, including the Golden Dragon at the Krakow Film Festival, Best International Leaves Documentary at TV Festival in Monte Carlo, as well as the Crystal Award by SVT Swedish State Television. So... Uh, hi again, Nahid. Do you want to add anything else to this information? Uh, no, it's good. Uh, yeah, it's what I am. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. So I see that you have a really, really extraordinary career and it is a brave and I see that you're a brave and uh, activist person who is pursuing her beliefs and freedom of wom woman rights. So I just wanted to... Uh, start by talking about your documentary. Can you just tell a little bit about your documentary for the audience who still didn't watch it? Yeah, uh, me, you uh, explain a lot about me, uh, but uh, I, I maybe need to to tell um, my background, why I'm making a film. Exactly, uh, that was uh, my second question. Why did you choose to do this project? So maybe uh, you can tell it yeah, all together, uh, yeah. Yeah, not, not only this project and why I, because when I fled from Iran uh, to Sweden, it was I and my uh, three other brothers, we were activists, and but they took two uh, of my younger brothers, Rostam, 17, and Javad, uh, 15. They, after six months, they, they uh, ex, uh, uh, killed one of them, Rostam, who was 17 years, and I had to just flee the country because they were also after me. So me and my daughter fled the country with a little small motorboat uh, from uh, Iran to Dubai and uh, from Dubai to Sweden. So in Sweden, I, I tried to, to live a normal life, Swedish life, uh, but after a while, you know, you are Iranian. It, it happens a lot to ir Iranian. The oppression is very high and I couldn't just be... Uh, live my life so i decided to make films about my my and be their voice be my brother voice i couldn't uh, just let it be they executed my brother and uh, a lot of my friends were in uh, prison and uh, other were executed and the regime uh, nobody nobody didn't know anything about it because the social media wasn't like it was, we didn't have any social media. They could um, uh, kill anybody. For example, when they killed my my brother, uh, we didn't dare to to tell anybody because it was dangerous for us. Just my neighbor or maybe our relatives knew about my brother Rostam. But now, if somebody uh, be executed, if something happened, so we know everything, uh, all knows about that. That's very, very good. So I, when I decide to make films, so I, I, after 17 years, I could go back to Iran. Uh, and uh, when I saw, for example, the prostitution, the girls, the women, how oppression against them is so high, so I uh, decided to make a film about uh, them. So Prostitution Behind the Veil was the, my first international film, and then my Stolen Revolution, The Queen and I, Four Wives, One Man. So all of them was something that maybe I 
without I decide to make film about women, it was what I need, my heart needed. Uh, so uh, when I saw Masi uh, in social media, it was maybe five years ago, I saw her and she was so like me because she did uh, same thing as I did. I made film um, to be voice of uh, people in Iran to let other uh, countries know about my country, my my people. So, and Masih did same thing, but uh, uh, via social media. Me and Masih, we are outside the country. We don't risk anything, even if I'm treated by the Iranian government uh, and they sent me a letter, we are going to kill you and your family and everything like that. But we are safe anyway. Uh, but not the women in Iran. Many of uh, the young women in my film, Ibi My Voice, uh, are in prison right now. Yes, unfortunately. So Yes, yeah. it's really, really tragic, actually. They're just uh, trying to gain their freedom and just their uh, freedom of expression, the way they want to live. They they just want to decide how they want to live, and they're mm -hmm. fighting for that. And But before we come to that, I just wanted to ask, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how Masih's, Masih's social media affected Iranian women? What, what have she done? And what, how did she start it? Can you just tell us a little bit about that? How did she decide to do such a thing? Yeah, uh, she she just put a picture of, of herself without uh, hijab, without veil, and uh, asked other women who wants to be with me. So she thought she, she just get answer from the from people, but it was yeah. thousands of uh, videos and pictures that uh, women took off their hijab and sent it to Masi. So, and it began like, like that. And uh, I'm very impressed of the women in Iran that they risk their life uh, to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's gone uh, viral and everybody started, all the women, almost every woman started to do that. And uh, they started to be together all, all together but the yeah. problem was also uh, when she started this I mean she used the power of social media like you said maybe a couple of years ago when somebody gone missing or somebody was arrested it was really difficult to uh, people to hear about that but right now yeah. we can use the power of social media so uh, we can just uh, connect internationally and I, I guess she did that she used the power of social media but of yeah. course there was uh, uh there was really really she was taking risks and she started to get threats right and it, it, her life was uh, in danger right can you tell us about that also yeah of course uh, you know when the regime uh, notes that um uh, they can oppress uh, they can arrest people in Iran, but they have uh, difficulty with us outside the Iran. Yeah. So so what they did to Masi, they treated he, her family in Iran, they arrested uh, her brother uh, and put him in uh, prison. And uh, they even took her sister to TV to say against, because uh, Masi comes from a religious family uh, half of the member of her family are against her and they are with Khamenei, with the regime. So it's very tough to be in uh, in uh, such a family. So uh, she had difficulty with that and they treated her all the time that they are going to put, uh, to kill her. And uh, last year they, they uh, planned to kidnap her to Iran. Uh, mm -hmm. from New York, because she lives in New York, she, from New York to Venezuela and from Venezuela to Iran, because Venezuela and Iran have very good relationship. They are like two brothers. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, FBI was, uh, uh, could um, stop uh, that the kidnapping. And uh, just uh, some months ago, they sent a terrorist uh, in front of her door and uh, with a man with Kalashnikov to kill oh Masi. Yeah. So it's yeah. the normal life for people who are against the regime. So it's not just Masi. Yeah. You can find a lot of uh, people. So the, um, 
two years ago, they killed one of uh, uh, the guy who I film uh, that I even put in my film, uh, the voice of, uh, the, be my voice. So she, her, his name was Ruho Lazam, and he was son of the mullah, son of one of the mullah, but his father worked for the regime, but he was against the regime and the regime kidnapped him and uh, took him to Iran and executed him. So it was what they could even do or they can do with Masi. I mean, it's really uh, dangerous for people who are already in Iran, but also it's really dangerous for people who are living overseas. But I guess even though through these um, all these threats, all these dangerous circumstances, the 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 most um, I think courageous thing is that they're still fighting and they're still um, pursuing their goals and their uh, all. all try to make it all better and they're not stopping right i mean even though through through these all these through stressful times they still continue yeah because because iranian people we what, what we want is freedom it's easy to get yeah. i mean iran is very rich country uh, and uh, poverty and uh, uh, oppression is the highest in the world i I think so. Uh, we, we uh, of course, and Iranian people are very well educated, and they are smart. They are intelligent. So, uh, what we want is just freedom to oppression uh, till uh, to talk to uh, be ourselves could uh, be a normal yeah. like me and you and show our hair. It's not nothing important the hair to showing the hair. But not but can be killed for that. Yeah. And especially it's really important because nowadays, especially nowadays, women in Iran are fight like I said before, fighting for their freedom. They're taking their hijabs and they're showing their hairs at schools, at workplaces, and they're fighting against all this oppression. So yeah. I think your documentary is now a lot, lot more important because you you started to tell this before all that and now uh, it, it's uh, as if uh, as if um telling all this all mm. this situation um but you started to do it before that so i think it's it's really important that uh, now it the the situations are going on parallel you know yeah. now your documentary and the uh, the all the things are happening in iran are like going parallel so what do you th what do you think about that i mean do you think all these documentaries affects um people in a way can women in iran reach these documentaries for example can they anyway watch these documentaries i also wanted to ask you about that they do they have any resources to get enlightened in a way so they can reach the, these documentaries and have more courage I, I think they don't need to see my documentary because the, yeah, it's their the daily life so yeah. You know, the the regime came to power 43, 44 years yeah. ago. So we, as soon as the Islamists came to the to power, so we were outside and uh, demonstrate against the hijab, the forced hijab. It was like a shock for us because I was one of them who who attended the revolution, and we want we wanted a freedom because we didn't have that freedom that we wanted that freedom to uh everything but uh but we had a normal life in shah's time yeah. but we wanted we wanted to be like yeah we are intelligent to uh express our, ourselves but uh i mean that we we had same uh demonstration after revolution after the the islamic came to to power and it continued but now uh, I think uh, what I see in this revolution, it's even, I was also surprised that the so young girls, 12, 13, yeah. 14 years girls go out and they, uh, they are so brave that you just is shocked, you know, they know that if they go out, they can be killed. But how long they, I think, how long can we, uh, live a uh, life that we are we are worth more than that. So one of the girls that I have um, contact with say, 
it if we don't go out if we if we don't get our freedom it's uh, and be afraid that we are going to be killed it's like every day they kill us because they don't let us be ourselves mm -hmm. uh, so now even if i know that i'm going to be killed so i go out to get yeah. my right yeah so people are i i think um uh, i just you know i don't know how much you use twitter so they have that, yeah. a lot of discussion uh, on Twitter right now. Every day, every day, they uh, just report to out to us uh, who are not in Iran to to say to us what happened, and they want that we are their voices. So we have a lot to do. We who are not in yeah, Iran they exactly. The yeah, they go to the streets and they fight uh, with uh, nothing. They are. They don't have, with empty hands. They go out and they know that all the police they can they have uh, a weapon from from the war with Kalashnikov. So big weapon for what? To, yeah, yeah. to shoot to their own people. Yeah, and we have to be their voices. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that. I mean, it's really important that that who are not us who are not Iran are also fighting in for them and also uh, trying to help them because they have really limited resources there. And that's actually why I asked uh, the what the previous question because I think the social media, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all these social media uh, tools really, really help us to people uh, to get empowerment. Also these documentaries too, I guess. I mean, when people all around the world see these documentaries, they also get affected by it in a good way, I guess. And it, yes. it, it can help them to just uh, be activists uh, in their own way, maybe. Mm -hmm. And also uh, it's why I ask that because maybe in, uh, in Iran, in some families, children especially small children are brought up in a way that they believe that for example they should wear hijab but maybe if they know what's going on maybe if they know there's a documentary about explaining the tragedy of all this or a someone is uh, supporting them for the freedom of their life they can also maybe break out from their family's oppression and just they like do now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. Do now. You know, uh, yeah. uh, when I made this film, when I shoot this film, they just took off uh, their hijab one once a week or twice a week. But uh, after uh, now, they have they are so educated the the, the girls, and uh, they they know they they right when Ma Mahsa Amini was killed because she she just showed yeah. a little of her. It was she had hijab. Uh, and it was enough. So it was like a bomb that you. It was explosion. Triggered everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, social media is the 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 key of the revolution. I think. Yeah, I th and also I think what Masi did was extraordinary. So and uh, after that, I guess many many people also started to talk out on social media and uh, started to reach to each other. So uh, I think, like I said, talking about all these problems as not, and not giving us up is really important. So uh, thank you, Nahid, for being with us, us here today. Uh, it was delighted to talk with you. Um, and do you want to add anything else before we finish our interview? I, I, I'm just very curious about the relationship between uh, uh, Turkey and uh, Iran. Uh, so... So how Iran affected Turkey, uh, you in Turkey? I think it really affected. I mean, you mean the, uh, the all the events in Iran? I mean, like I said, because of social media, we are able to hear everything. We're able yeah. to hear all of it. So always people are sharing posts and uh, especially like artists are sharing posts because many, many Iranian people are following those artists and they're sending messages to them through DMs and they're always sharing, always talking, always trying to... Uh, make them stronger but of course when we talk about supporting each other there are also other lots of other uh, circumstances like uh, 
legislation and political relations. There are lots of other aspects. But as we talk about public, a public is really aware of what's happening and they're always talking about it more than ever. Yeah, and I think yeah. if Iran uh, get free from the mullah and be free country, it yeah. affects all the countries around Iran also. Yeah, yeah, I believe that too. I mean, yeah. it would be a symbol of uh, what can be done, even yes. if it looks impossible. It be a symbol of what can be done when we're uh, courageous and when we gather all together. Uh, it will be a symbol of that. So I hope mm. I hope that all those efforts will find their answers. I hope that. Yeah. Me too. Thank yeah. you. Have thank, thank you so thank much you. again for being here with us and hope to see you soon so, yeah. in some other. Uh, they are going to kidnap me if I come to Turkey. <laughs> You cannot come here. Because, you know, countries around the Iran, it's dangerous for Iranian who uh, are activists. So, so it's, it's really hard for you to, I guess, travel uh, to besides, country, to, yeah, besides European countries, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. really hard. Yeah. Well, th thank you. Soon, I think, I hope it will be free, so I don't need to do that, so I can yes, go to Yes, I hope home. so, too. I hope so, too, and thank you for your efforts. I mean, we really need a lot more people like you, so thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye.